Hello everybody, and as promised before, uh, today's uh, lesson will be on explaining all of the motion blocks. I, I, I mentioned before in my other tutorials, or the projects we were building, which are over. That was the last, uh, yesterday's project, or, or two days ago's project was the last one from uh, the book so now I just want to get more into the how does those blocks work and what they do so let's get started with that this uh, move uh, block which we've used in several projects it moves the sprite uh, in the direction it's facing depending on how many how many steps you give it so you can move five you can move ten and all you do is just click on it and change it to whatever value you want and the max unless you want it to disappear on from the screen it's uh 240 or something like that we'll check on that but this that's what the move uh block does it just moves our sprite. So, kind of to give you a little demo, let me use these because nothing happens without the flag. So, we want him to move 10 steps. There he goes. 10. And that didn't look like anything, but if we make it bigger, he should move 50. There you go. And then, so that's a, that's a move block. The turn block, this, this one turns the sprite, depending on the degrees you give it. It will, it will turn the sprite clockwise. So that's, that's what this arrow here says. Turn clockwise uh, certain degrees. Uh, let's try that one. Let's turn them 90 degrees so you guys can actually see. There we go. Now, this one is the counterclockwise turn. We'll turn that'll turn our sprite counterclockwise. Let's make them straight again. There we go. This uh, here will allow for our. Uh, our sprite to move in a random position or to be m or move with the pointer of the mouse move with when we move the mouse move the sprite let's see let's try see what that does oh <laughs> yeah it's gonna move with the mouse because the mouse clicked up there now let's try with the random so random, it just randomly picks anywhere on this on the on the stage. And this here, uh, up here, this is called the stage where our sprite is. Now this one here, for that, uh, our sprite will move to the x and the y that we tell it to move to. And for that, you guys need to understand that uh, this, the screen itself here, the stage, if you see it as an X and Y axis, kind of like this here. Like here. This is, this is how the scratch uh, stage works. We have our center, which is 0, 0. We have our max Y and our min Y. And the same for the x and x in uh, negative direction and x in y in x in positive direction so depending what we make that x it will move our sprite in a different either up or down or left to right and yeah this is very important to know and that way you know the max and minimums you can actually give it before it disappears from your screen So here, let's give it, let's move it, 
Negative 150 to 26, that's fine. So this here is negative 150 to 26. And then the glide, we used the glide before in uh, one of our projects, or several projects, but I think we used the glide with the X and the Y. This is just a glide with uh, the ability to move to a random position or with a pointer. And all it does is for how many seconds you tell it, it'll glide in that direction. Let's put six there. And it makes it look like it's moving, basically. Now the glide for the X and Y is the one we used before. And that uh, that allows for the character to glide in the X and Y direction you give it. Let's do three. Oh, he's probably already there. Or close enough that. Okay, let's try that one. There we go. And this one is a uh, point at the direction. So this one you can kind of like the to return one, but this one is said like use for initial how you want him to turn. So let's say I want him to turn in a 180 degree angle uh, at initial time. So that's what I'm gonna set him up to. And and this is pretty pretty uh, helpful here. This is your 360 degree. So you can keep going. It, it works with the X and Y axis, so that's why you guys don't see the 360. But but this will be to the negative 90 degree angle to make him turn the other way. This is to turn the way it's turned right now. Let's turn him facing to the uh, left. Apparently, I turn him facing to the left and upside down because I don't know my angles. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, this one's similar to that point, but this one points towards the mouse. I guess right, these are the basic options: the mouse pointer. It will point to where the mouse is. Uh, Hovering, I guess. And I don't have a loop, so it's just going to do it once. So since I clicked on the flag, it's going to point that direction. Okay, and then this one here. This one here is to change X by a certain amount of, of uh, position. However, you might you want to change it and um, it's similar sort of depending on how you use it similar to the uh, to the go to X and Y because you can change the X and the Y individually since we do have a change X and Y we could change it individually and kind of use it like that let's do that and it'll change the position of your sprite so it, it, you can use this individually or you can use it as a group we also have the set the set x and y and this uh, sets the the sprites x position to a specific amount that you give it and then we also have the set y which is similar to that Except it's in the white direction. Now, one of the ones we've used in one of our projects was this uh, if on H. So it's not going to be moving, but if it were moving, if it were moving and if the text is on the edge of the stage on any of the edges, then the, sprites will, the sprite will bounce back. And that's what this allows for our sprite to do. So that way it's not. It doesn't escape our st stage 
It's always on our stage. And then the set style rotate. It just rotates um, the sprite itself. So these are basically executions you can do, the motions you can do on the sprite. It will be hard to do them on a background or on the stage because they're full screen. I guess you could. But usually those are used for sprite for your sprites. And then these are the X and Y positions that uh these are kind of conditions motions uh that you can use for checks to see if the X is equal to a certain amount or the Y position equals a certain amount. Uh, like you can use one of these guys. Okay, where's the and I'm I'm gonna try to create projects later where I we can use this stuff all together and explain it again so that it kind of becomes us it's like a nature but um, you can use this for example and use if the right position is equal to 50 then uh, uh, glide now let's do uh, like a random and let's see let's put them at 50 all right so you can use X it's just kind of like you could put them in conditions to check and then direction so these are your three options x y pos x position y position and direction which uh, allow you to manipulate where your sprite is so yeah these are just the motion blocks and um, the motion blocks are known as stock blocks because they're kind of like puzzles you can stack them on top of each other And they perform the main commands. And uh, depending on how you use them, you can do a lot of pretty cool things with them. So tomorrow, I would like to look at the looks and use them. Um, explain them a little more on that. Let me know in the comments below if you guys would like to go more in detail on this motion. Or... Uh, guys have any ideas on how to make it better uh, do let me know I am definitely open to suggestions and uh, we'll work from there thank you guys